My name is Bavek. I've been with Amazon for about 12 years. Um, my focus has been media and entertainment. If you're not familiar with AWS, we provide a cloud infrastructure platform, one of um, Amazon's um, other businesses. I'm going to talk to you today about this very exciting topic about generative AI uh, and what it can do and how it could potentially benefit. I think it's an exciting topic. There's a lot. You can't really escape this as a theme that goes on in news and media. Lots of concerns, lots of hype, lots of money. But I think at the end of the day, there are components here that can be valuable to your business. And what I'm going to try and do is explain to you a little bit about the technology how you could potentially apply it. The transformation is really ahead of us, um, and through the hype, our paths to actually leverage this technology for business gain and business benefit. Over time, if we look at technology, we, um, we've had this growth of data, the ability to collect data, to instrument, to understand how to use that data to make better business decisions. So what do you do with it? So we have kind of many, we, we see kind of four pillars emerging here. One is around customer experience. I'll just go to the bottom. The other round is employee productivity, so internal operations. The next part is really business operations. How do you improve your business using these technologies? And then finally, on the creative side, how do you create significantly more content that is more personalized, at a faster clip, to really keep your audience engaged. Um, if we get into the details, you can see things around virtual chatbots or agents assessments or personalization. Um, we can see text and image creation. So this ability to be dynamic and experiment is very key. On the business operations side, we see like traditional AI and ML really improving business operations, so providing insights into data. If you think about most of your business reporting today, it's often a what has happened. But the real question often is, why did this happen? And what does it mean next? And then finally, on the creative side, um, just the ability to accelerate time to market for specific content, uh, for specific demographics. Um, so these are the vast array of things that we see our customers gravitating towards when they're looking to apply generative AI from a business perspective. And so what do we try and do? What, what's one of the biggest themes we see emerging is a hyper-personalized experience. Constantly creating net new ways of your customers engaging with products or themes or trends becomes really key. And so you can do individual personalization. You can provide those customers with related items, like what items, based on what you're looking at now, here are other things that people have looked at. Um, and then you can begin to do things like user segmentation and analysis. These inform you on what you're going to build, what you're going to process, how you're going to market. So how do you apply it? What we wanted to do is provide a way of looking at outcomes you can, you, you can generate from this technology and the effort it might take to actually get there. So user personalization, uh, next best action, um, which is like if, this, uh, if you like this, then you might like that. This call to action or next, next best action is a very key thing, right? That's what you want your customer to do as they move further down the exploration or discovery or even buying and notifications and um, artwork per personalization. So this is really creating things that are very unique um, to that user or that group of users. Things like pricing recommendations. So we're beginning to see a trend now where dynamic pricing can be added into the business as a technology. So these are just some KPIs. You all have your own and has how you look at your business, how you're measuring it, where you want it to go next. Um, but if you look at conversion rate or average uh, order value, customer lifetime value, all of the things that you look, again, to drive your business, to make money on your business, and to uh, pay your employees, um, these become very key things. So all of these personalized experiences are really driving key KPIs for your business. And that's where that kind of working backwards comes in. We offer personalization as a service. Why is that useful? Well, it lets you do all of these things that help create a more compelling customer experience. It lets you generate insights into what your customers might want to look at, what they've been looking at, what they might wish to look at next. And so personalization, as an example, can be used to create more compelling email messages even. Behind the scenes, it's doing a lot of stuff, right? So what we're trying to do is make this easier, make it more accessible. More importantly, though, allow you to experiment. Amazon CTO is this gentleman here on stage. And I think in this realm now of generative AI and responsible use of AI, ML, and generative AI, I think the one thing that we like to reinforce is that this is just a tool. It's an assistant to the people you have and to the processes you have. At the end of the day, you're all the professionals. You make a decision on what is going to go out to your customer or not, or how you're going to use this technology. Uh, these tools help predict and they help aid the process, but they're not making decisions, and we definitely don't advocate for that. And so uh, I thought this uh, kind of one line summed it up, right? You're the professionals. Please use these technologies as best you can, 
but ultimately you are able to decide if what they produce is right for your customer and your business. And with that, I will say thank you all for your time.